This video is going to show you how you can form and pour monolithically a landscape wall of any shape or size, curved or radius, which would include your footing, your wall, and your cap. Once the footings are dug, paint the line that represents the outside surface of your wall. Drive stakes every three feet. Fasten a board, a bendable board, to those stakes to hold your spider ties. After that's done, fasten your spider tie from the outside. On the inside board, you'll level the spider tie first before attaching it. This will allow for your stacks to remain vertically straight and everything should fall in place perfectly later on. Fill that, what we call a pre-footing, with dry sack cement, it's the pre-mixture that you get at Home Depot, and simply wet it down with a water hose, just like you do it, what would do with a fence post. You don't need to wait for it to dry. This creates a stable base for you to immediately start building your spider ties. You'll build the spire tie walls just like you did as you saw in the other videos, building up four feet and adding your rebar as you go. Apply your plywood to either the back side or the front side depending on whether you have a toe or a heel footing. What you see here are temporary little brackets that allow you to hold your plywood up for the depth or the thickness of your footing. They work very much like a starter tie. It allows two men to simply put the plywood down and it holds the plywood up to the elevation necessary. Just like in all other applications, screw the plywood to the spire ties using your alignment tool. Adjust the alignment tool so the screws go into the proper location. As you see, these brackets make it very easy to put the curved plywood up without any effort. Establish the height of your wall, whether it be level or following the contour of your hill. Mark it and then go ahead and cut everything. The plywood, the spire ties, anything that may be in the way. What you see here in this part of the video is that we wanted a cantilever edge with a slot underneath to hold lighting. So we went ahead and doubled up or tripled up boards on the outside and put it a wider board uh, to create that additional shape. We put a band at the bottom to help strengthen the plywood from the hydraulic pressure that's created during the pour. As you see, if you get the proper mix design, the concrete will actually flow underneath the wall and will not spill out and go up higher. If the job is big enough, the first pour can be much stiffer than the second. So as you can see with the proper mix design, concrete will only flow a certain distance horizontally. In some places we put uh, an exterior form board up for the footing so that the concrete wouldn't go any farther. In all cases, you'll want to consolidate the concrete using a vibrator or tapping the exterior. This step eliminates any voids or honeycomb. The mix design is everything. If you get the mix design properly, the concrete will flow just beautifully. And as you see, there's extra concrete we put on top for later to finish it off because some of the settling from the tapping. This project had over 90 feet of wall. It took three men, three and a half days to form, pour, and strip. So you can see, really, you're only limited by your imagination. It saves a tremendous amount of labor and a tremendous amount of time. As you see by these pictures, you'll have a radius, beautiful contour wall that your customers will love for years to come.